And throughout your speech, I sense that you said Pentecostalism was associated with this idea of portability. You know, you can take it anywhere. It, it's, it's a religion that is portable. And also it's accessible. You said the availability of spiritual gifts is yeah. available for everyone. Right. Um, however, what's, what struck me in the reading also, what struck me when you were, when you were speaking, is that these are two aspects of Pentecostalism that I don't associate with fundamentalist Islam. I, you know, don't profess to be an expert on fundamentalist Islam, but I, I usually don't associate those two qualities. No. Um, because of this, can you explain why fundamentalist Islam is thus on the rise, on par with Pentecostalism, despite the fact it doesn't have these, these attributes? Well, I'm carefully... I'm always careful to avoid expressing any expertise about Islam at all because I always find that w w what I've just gained from the a expert A is, is contradicted by expert B. So I just have to kind of, kind of take an amalgam from the various expertises that are offered me about Islam. But um, with, with that little sort of defensive remark, <laughs> um, it, it's, it seems to me that, that Islam is fundamentally integral. Uh, I mean, the Catholic term was the, for this in Europe was anti-Christ, uh, anti or the Latin American term was anti-Christa, um, and that is that there is some relationship between the, the integrity, all the integrities of one's belonging are connected, and that is they, they relate to territory, they relate to political power, they, they relate to the relationship between religion and a particular territory, so that a certain territory is defined as inherently belonging to a a, a particular faith. Uh, and, and Catholicism also, to some extent, has done, done that. I mean, a Jesuit said to me, what right have they got to go to Latin America? I mean, that <laughs> what right? You know, it, so the, the notion of pluralism is not universally uh, accepted. Uh, the same is true of the Eastern Orthodox Church. It has this sense of its own canonical territory. So it, this is not a straightforwardly Islam and Islamic Christian difference. It is a difference between those religions who, who have this sense of, of a fundamental <coughs> inherent connection between a faith and a territory and those that have built on the pluralistic fissile possibilities that lie within the Christian uh, repertoire. But obviously the relationship between a faith and a territory and, and the, the integrity of a culture is a very powerful influence. Now, to the extent that Islam feels itself threatened by uh, those kinds of modernization that are related to westernization, which isn't the same thing as technology, um, that's likely to act as a mobilizing force and, and a, a reinforcing uh, element. Let me just add one tiny further thing, and that is that technology itself is not, uh, modernization in terms of technology is not um, a factor that leads to secularization. Um, it's clear that you can use the most modern technology and be a society that's uh, deeply religious. Grant Wacker, who talks about Pentecostalism, says it is searching for Eden with a satellite dish. So technology and religion are not necessarily opposed. <laughs>